of my fears I'm ready to come in from my swim I'm ready to begin We just saw the painting Awesome, awesome. Tell us a little bit about how this all came to fruition, tonight's uh, event. Well, I've been a board member for Shane's for a couple of years, and um, you know, I'm an artist, so I, uh, I just was thinking about when we were getting ready to do the Demons uh, project, I was thinking about, you know, I was going to do a live painting there, and I was just thinking about how I could enhance it and make something better, and I happened to be friends with a lot of the musicians. And it was something I'd been thinking about for years on, on my own, just to do for my own. It was a personal painting. So once I started organizing it and putting that together, it just it, it was perfect timing, right timing for everybody. Everybody happened to be in town at the time. So what happens? You make the call to to a slash and say, hey, you know, this is for a good cause. And do they come over to your studio, or how does it work? Well, what we were doing was the most of it took place at Neiman Marcus. Okay. So the only one that took place in my studio was well, there's three: Joe Walsh, uh, Ringo, and uh, Dewey Bunnell. Dewey was. Because the day of the event at, at Neiman's, Dewey was opening up now at the Nokia Theater. He was opening up the new uh, Nokia, the Nokia Live, not the smaller menu. So he was opening up that night. So he came out to my studio that day. So this was the first set of handprints, which was kind of ironic because the very first concert I ever went to was America in Chicago. <laughs> so it was kind of kind of perfect timing. But everybody else, I mean, Slash and and Joe and uh, uh, Doug and uh, Denny Sywell, everybody. I mean, all I said, I asked them one time. Said, hey, here's look, look uh, you know, you in town. I first asked, are you in town in December, beginning of December? He said, yeah, we happen to be. I said, well, look, I'm trying to put this event together over at Neiman Marcus to raise money for two different charities, uh, Canine Companions and Shane's Inspiration. And everybody said yes right away. Can you imagine your life now after the injury without discovering this? I can't imagine my life. I mean, for the first 13 years, I really didn't do much artistically. When I first got injured, they were trying to teach me how to paint with a mouse stick because they knew I was into art prior to my injury. And it was just too confining, I just, I didn't like it. It was just too close, it wasn't fluid. So once I discovered I painted with the chair, and then it became a challenge to use the chair for such a, a positive, rather than, you know, I mean, yes, my mode of transportation, but, but to be able to use the chair more, it's like conquering the chair, basically, you know, it's like, so it's, it's just a big motivation to use something that most people would perceive as such a negative to be bringing me back to what I wanted to do as a child. Yeah, special wheels that you paint with, so you don't get paint all over the all over your place. Or? No, my studio is built in the garage, okay. so I can actually roll down to the end of the garage, and I hose the tires off with a high pressure hose, and then I hit it with a leaf blower. And I'm always working on like three or four paintings at a time. If you look, these tires here, they're they're full of paint. Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You should auction off the tires. You know, I saved all my tires. You know, it's funny because I I did first start out painting with. A special chair and I transfer in another chair mm -hmm. but you know I want to paint most throughout the day I mean I'm painting three or four times a day uh -huh. so I don't it's just too much hassle to transfer in and out of the chair so it's just easier to you know roll down hose off the tires hit it with a leaf blower dry it off I and mean, I used to clean them spotless but as you can see now it's just not anymore are there any particular artists that that um, inspire you I know you've been kind of um, people talk about the Jackson Pollock influence on your art but what do you what do you have to say to, to those kind of commentary well, Jackson Pollock was definitely, you know, he's a, an action painter and worked above the canvas, which I work above the canvas, which I, I actually like working above the canvas. I like that vision. I like that view. And then when you set it up, you know, it's definitely different. Um, but there's a lot of, I mean, I, I like Ed Moses. I like his style of painting. There's a, I mean, I, I, just, I just love going to galleries and, and museums, looking at the old masters, just looking at the combination of colors and stuff. So I mean, there's a variety of influences in there. I, what advice would you give other other either children or adults that are facing hardships and disabilities? Because you've got to, I mean, when I see the, the look on these kids' faces that when you go visit you know, them in the hospital and stuff, it's incredibly uplifting. But wh what do you tell these kids when you see them face-to-face? -face, there's no cameras on you. What do you tell them? You know, if God's blessed you with a talent, the talent's within you. And it's going to come out some way or another. And you just got to go after it. You can't, you can't listen to the doctors and you can't listen to... A lot of people that are telling you you can't do this. I mean, if you, if you really believe in yourself, and you know, God's going to help you find a way to do what you wanted to do and what He's blessed you to do. I mean, the best way you can honor God with your gift is to do it and, and be active in it. So, I mean, it's all these kids, I mean, I've, I've met a lot of kids with a lot of challenges, 
and they're just you know they don't know you know so but with a little bit of a challenge a little bit of boost you know you can do anything Here I